Hey everyone, it's Corey McCarthy and thank you for tuning in. I'm going to keep this as brief as possible because if you simply search the videos in this channel, you will find plenty of comprehensive content about soy backed entirely by research. However, a handful of people and counting have requested that I respond to Paul Joseph Wasson's recent Soy Boy video, which I will link below so that you can get a little background. I won't be playing clips from that video, rather just referencing it. If you've watched that video, then hopefully you'll have noticed, assuming that A, you are capable of critical thinking, and B, uh, you can recognize logical fallacies when they attempt to rape your ears, that Paul's entire video was pretty much a correlation argument, and correlation does not imply causation. And at 5 minutes and 43 seconds in, Paul even makes an appeal to authority using a doctor named Kayla T. Daniel, who refers to herself as the naughty nutritionist. Who, going by the clip that Paul had shared, doesn't appear to possess any understanding of what phytoestrogens are or how they behave. Phytoestrogens, which are plant estrogens, do have a similar chemical structure to mammalian estrogens, but similar does not mean the same. Pictured here, you'll see an example of a human estrogen at the top and a phytoestrogen at the bottom. As I said, chemically similar, but not the same. Their individual effects on the human body and health are significantly different. For instance, there is evidence that phytoestrogens may actually protect against mammalian estrogens, like those produced by the human body. In fact, high levels of soy intake are shown to actually block estrogenic effects in breast tissue. This is because phytoestrogens essentially occupy, and in doing so, block the receptor sites against estrogens. In fact, many very popular foods and drinks contain phytoestrogens, so why does everyone almost exclusively demonize soy? Is it because it's trendy? Do notice that this list contains the ever-popular beer and coffee. And beer actually contains more phytoestrogens than coffee. Tell me, Paul, was that water, juice, or soda that you enjoyed at the pub? I'd hope so, or else you've likely consumed some dreaded phytoestrogens. But despite those nasty, nasty phytoestrogens in coffee, its consumption manages to raise testosterone and decrease estrogen in men. Any thoughts on that little loophole in your phytoestrogen argument, Paul? You want to know what's really bad, though? Commercial cow's milk. Commercial cow's milk contains large amounts of mammalian estrogens and progesterone, which data suggests are absorbed. Commercial cow's milk has been demonstrated in at least one study to suppress gonadotropin, decrease LH, FSH, and testosterone, and increase estrogens. But what did you expect from the tit juice of a continuously lactating animal? So, you might want to quit that milk intake, Paul. You milk boy, you. Did you see what I did there? Now, let's move forward and review the body of research on soy and hormones specifically. Uh, that's what everyone came here for, I reckon. Uh, but before we begin, I want to know that this research is all human model. In other words, it was performed on humans, uh, not rodents or some other animal. Rodents, for instance, process isoflavones differently than humans do, and as such can provide different research outcomes to humans. Based on two different meta-analysis of existing data, extracted from over 51 human studies in total between the two, 15 of which were placebo-controlled, neither soy protein nor its isoflavones intake demonstrate any significant effect on testosterone, sex hormone binding globulin, free testosterone, or free androgen index in men. Furthermore, the isoflavones do not exert any feminizing effects on men either, even at intake levels equal to and considerably higher than what is typical for Asian males. Even furthermore, a 2015 Harvard study on 184 men undergoing infertility treatment found that soy intake did not play any role in fertility outcomes. And another paper which reviewed the data from three intervention studies found no concerns regarding soy isoflavone intake and reproductive hormones or semen quality. 
Additionally, yet another paper, which reviewed a total of 73 human studies, with a median soy intake equivalent to one pound of tofu per day, or three soy protein shakes, found no statistically significant effect on testosterone levels or follicle-stimulating hormone levels, and in women, no statistically significant changes in menstrual cycle length. In 12 of those studies, there was even a minor reduction in estrogen levels from soy consumption in female test subjects. There you have it. I've just presented research data extracted from approximately 137 total human studies. Let that sink in. Not one, not two, or three, or four, or even 20. 130 fucking seven. So there goes any reasonable chance to accuse me of cherry picking. To play devil's advocate, I've tried scouring the journals for damning evidence with regards to soy intake, but I primarily find N equals 1 case studies, which is really no better than personal anecdote when it comes to drawing conclusions, or I find research with too small of a sample size, or research with questionable controls, or studies on subjects with one or more existing health conditions, such as diabetes, which in and of itself has been associated with low serum testosterone levels in research. This is why seeking out and using quality, well-controlled human research is absolutely essential. Now, if that wasn't enough, data extracted from the large EPIC study demonstrates that vegans have both higher, total, and free testosterone despite having slightly higher SHBG. And that was after they adjusted for BMI, age, smoking status, exercise, and time of day that the testing occurred. You know, study controls. And the vegans from the EPIC study most certainly consumed soy products. In fact, only 27% of them consumed less than 5.9 grams of soy protein per day. The majority consumed 11.2 grams of soy protein per day on average, some even more. So consider yourself served, Paul. Usually I find your videos quite logical. But I must say, the Soy Boy video is a low point for your career. It's not that I don't agree with you that men are bigger pussies today than they were one, two, or three decades ago, as they most certainly are. And I covered this in detail in a recent video, which I will link below. But you're pointing fingers without any scientific basis. Anyway, let me know what you all think in the comments below. All of my references are linked over at my blog, which is also linked below. Uh, definitely like and share this video with a vengeance to ensure the absolute wildfire of misinformation caused by Paul's video is doused with water. Hell, share it incessantly on Paul's social media or anywhere his stupid video rears its handicapped head. Finally, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell button to keep on top of my regular updates. With that, I want to thank you all for watching and I'll see you all around in the next video.